IBMN's top 25. 25 species that sh should show up on everyone's site sooner or later. There are over 100 species of butterflies in northern Illinois. This large number of species can seem daunting for beginners who are just learning to identify them. This talk is designed to narrow this down to the 25 species that most people are likely to encounter on most sites. They're also the species that you're likely to see first when you begin monitoring. We will arrange the species by family. Now this list of the top 25 species that you see here is available on the IBMN website, so you can download it and refer back to it anytime you'd like to. We'll start with the swallowtails. <coughs> swallowtails, family Papionidae. There are two common species of swallowtails in northern Illinois. The first is the tiger swallowtail. This is a large butterfly, bigger than a monarch, and it's typically bright yellow with black tiger striping on it. Like all swallowtails in Illinois, the tiger swallowtail has tails on the hind wings. This is a canopy species. You frequently see it flying high up in the treetops, but it also comes down to take nectar at ground level fairly often. Most of the tiger swallowtails are yellow, but a small number of female tiger swallowtails are a dark black form, such as the one shown here. Notice that there is a lot of blue on the hind wing, and this blue extends very far close to the body on the hind wings. You can also make out the tiger striping faintly on the wings. This is much more visible on the underside of the wings than the upper side of the wings. and there is no yellow above. Now contrast that no yellow above with the next species that we're going to look at, the black swallowtail. This is a meadow species. This can be found in open places um, like high quality prairies, but it can also be found in sunny meadows that are dominated by Eurasian vegetation. It's very, very common in northern Illinois. This is smaller than a tiger swallowtail. It's maybe two-thirds to three-quarters the size of a tiger swallowtail. Uh, predominantly black, but you'll notice that in contrast to the black form female of the tiger swallowtail, there are prominent yellow spots on the wings. These are especially characteristic of the males, but they show up in the females too, such as in this picture. The um, Spots on the females are much less prominent than they are on the males, and the blue areas on the hind wings are much more extensive. The next family that we'll look at are the whites and sulfurs, the family Pieridae. These are the common white and yellow butterflies that you see in many habitats. There are three species that we will talk about. The first is the cabbage white. This is a non-native species. It's medium-sized. It's neither really large like the swallowtails or the monarch, but neither is it really very small like uh, the blues, for example. It's one of just two very common white butterflies in northern Illinois. So if you see a white butterfly, you'll know it's either a cabbage white or the other species that we'll talk about in just a moment. There are black spots and black wingtips, as you can see in the picture here. Now, the next species in this family is actually two species, the common and orange sulfur. These can be kind of challenging because they hybridize with each other a lot. We'll talk about how to deal with that in just a moment. This is another medium-sized butterfly. It's roughly the same size as a cabbage white. I, these are very common yellow or orange species. These are the really common yellow and orangey yellow butterflies that you see flying around, especially later in the summertime, though they can fly in the spring as well. And you can sort of see through the wings here that on the upper side there are black wing borders above, and this is much more extensive than the black wing tips that we saw a moment ago in the cabbage white you're not likely to see this butterfly sitting with its wings open at all. Uh, when it lands, it uh, tends to land with its wings closed, as is shown in this particular picture. So generally, either you will see the black wing borders on the butterfly as it flies by you, or you will have to kind of see them th through the wings 
uh, as they are closed, as is shown in this picture. There is a prominent silvery spot below, right there, right in the middle of the hind wing, and that's another characteristic feature of this particular species. Now, I mentioned that there are two and that they hybridize a lot. These are common butterflies. Uh, it can be very difficult to tell whether you are looking at a common or an orange sulfur, particularly if you're looking at a hybrid. These are also ecological equivalents. They're both found as very widespread species in many open sunny areas. Because of that, we deal with this by simply not separating them, and you should record this on your data sheet as a common slash orange sulfur, and not worry about whether it is a common sulfur or an orange sulfur. Another confusing thing about this particular group of species is that both of them have other common names that you will see quite frequently. The common sulfur is sometimes called the clouded sulfur, and the orange sulfur is sometimes called the alfalfa butterfly. Uh, one other feature of the common and orange sulfurs is that both of them have white form females, such as the one that you see here. Notice that in this butterfly you can see very easily the wide black borders around both the forewings and to a lesser extent the hindwings. Now I mentioned a moment ago that these particular species don't tend to land with their wings open. In fact, it's very, very rare that you will see one of these butterflies landed with its wings open. What you'll notice about this particular butterfly is that it's sitting with its wings pressed very flat against the ground, and its abdomen is curled up. This is actually a f uh, female uh, of, of the species here, and what you don't see is that just out of the frame above her, there is a hovering male butterfly that's trying to court with her. She is not interested in him. This is her rejection posture. She is saying buzz off creep to the male butterfly that's attempting to court with her. <clears throat> the next family that we're going to look at are the hair streaks, coppers, and blues. These are sometimes called the gossamer winged butterflies, the family Lycenidae. And the common species in the top, top 25 are two species of blues. We'll also look at some hair streaks. So let's start with the blues. As their name would apply, these are blue butterflies. Uh, one thing that all of the gossamer wing butterflies in Illinois share is that these are all small butterflies. And in fact, the eastern tail blue is tiny. It's the smallest butterfly that we will find here in Illinois. You will see that this is distinguished from the uh, next blue butterfly that we'll be looking at by the orange spot on the edge of the hind wing right there. And this is, a, this is visible both on the top and the undersides of the wings. The tail breaks off readily, so you will often see this um, without its tail. So the tails, if they're there, they're a wonderful identifying feature, but if you see a blue butterfly around here that doesn't have this tail, uh, you want to consider that the tail has probably broken off. When not flying, this butterfly frequently basks with its wings open, and this is in contrast to the next species that we'll be looking at, so notice how widely open the wings are on this particular butterfly. This particular individual is a male. The males are bright blue above. In contrast, females are this mouse gray colored above. No notice that you can still see uh, the tails and the orange spots at the corner of the hind wing. Underneath, the eastern tail blue is a uniform light gray to whitish and there are black spots, and the orange spots are very, very prominent below. In fact, typically the orange spots are more visible on the underside than they are on the upper side. This particular individual has its wings just slightly parted open, so you can see the, the just hint of bright blue there, so you can tell that this one is a male. Okay, now let's contrast that with the other really common blue butterfly in Illinois, and that is the spring or summer azure. Now, azures are a group that are being uh, reconsidered by taxonomists. They're being split into a bunch of different species. Um, spring and summer azures have recently been separated as two different species. Uh, and we are simply not going to worry about the different species of azures that you can see. They can be extraordinarily difficult to tell apart. 
and often you can't tell them apart without dissecting their abdomens. So we'll, we will simply refer to these as spring or summer azures. Now notice that this species has no orange spots visible either on the upper or the undersides of the hind wings. Uh, there is a uh, white cast to the undersides, um, gray in some individuals with irregular dark spots, lines, and chevrons. And the chevrons can be quite prominent in many individuals and are a good distinguishing feature. I mentioned that the um, eastern tail blue tends to bask with its wings wide open. The spring azure does not. <clears throat> this is a female. The females are white to blue above with a wide, dark border on the forewings. You can see that very wide, dark edge uh, along the upper side of the forewing in this individual. The males don't have that. They're a uniform bright blue, and they're much bluer than the females are in this species. Now, this species only very rarely opens its wings to bask, and even when it does open its wings to bask, as this individual is doing, it will only do so part way. It never opens its wings fully the way the eastern tailed blues will when they bask, and that can be a good way of distinguishing these two species. This species also tends to be a stronger flyer than the eastern tailed blue. So when it uh, leaves its perch, it will tend to fly up higher and fly stronger. The eastern-tailed blue tends to stay lower in the vegetation and fly more slowly. Now, that's only true if it leaves on its own. If you scare the butterfly and it flies away in a panic flight, the eastern-tailed blue can be a perfectly strong flyer under those circumstances. The next group of butterflies that we want to look at are hair streaks. Now there are about 10 species of hair streaks that can be seen in northern Illinois. And they can be a challenge at times to distinguish all the way to this level of species. Uh, however, you're going to see them out on your sites and so for beginners, for people just starting out in the monitoring network, it's sufficient to simply say that you've seen a hair streak and not worry too much about exactly which type you have seen. Like the blues, these are small butterflies, although the hair streaks tend to be a little bit larger than the blues are. These are strong flyers. Uh, now, in this case, uh, it can be helpful to know what is meant by a strong flyer. When either of the blues fly away, even if they're flying in a panic flight, even if you've scared them, even if you're chasing them, they fly slowly enough that you can follow them fairly easily with your eye. When a hair streak takes flight, it flies very quickly and it flies fast enough that it's going to be very difficult to track the butterfly in flight with your eyes. And so that's a good way of distinguishing um, by flight these small butterflies. Hair streaks are typically brown or gray with red or blue spots on the hind wings and they often have tails. Now particularly when people are starting out they uh, can sometimes be concerned about the eastern tailed blue, which also has tails. And they'll sometimes want to know, how do I know that I'm not seeing a hair streak? Well, as you become used to these butterflies, you'll begin seeing that the eastern tailed blue is actually noticeably smaller than the hair streaks. You'll probably see more eastern tailed blues than you will hair streaks as well. They are uh, a very, very common species. But unless you've had uh, an actual hair streak to observe and notice how much bigger than it is than an eastern tail blue, that can be sometimes difficult to look at. Here, the strength of flight can be a really helpful characteristic. And again, if it flies away and it sort of flutters and meanders away, then you've got an eastern tail blue. If it zips away, you're much more likely to have a hair streak at that point. So you want to start out by simply learning to uh, identify that you're seeing a hair streak. And we've seen about four different species of hair streaks in this series of pictures here. You can see they all look subtly different from each other, but you can pretty much tell that all of them have the basic pattern of a hair streak. And in your first year or so, that's what you really should learn to identify. Now the next uh, group of species that we're going to be looking at are the satyrs. And this is uh, the first group that is not a family of butterflies. This is a subfamily within the brush-footed butterflies. And we'll look at the brush-footed butterflies in a moment. 
Now, the satyrs all share the characteristics of being brown butterflies that have prominent eye spots on them. And there are four species that we're going to look at here in the top 25 from Illinois. The first is the little wood satyr, and it is the commonest of the four satyrs that we're going to be looking at. It's a medium-sized butterfly. Uh, this particular butterfly has rounded wings, and each wing has a pair of prominent yellow ringed spots. And I think of this as the butterfly with headlights because each of the four wings has two very prominent yellow spots on it. You'll also notice that the eye spots have pupils. They have light spots in the middle of the eye spots, and these pupils are vis visible on both the upper and the under surfaces of the wings, as you see here. The other thing to notice is that on the underside of the wings, the spots are sometimes expanded to double spots, and this is particularly true on the undersides of the wings for this species. Now, the next species that we'll look at is the northern pearly eye. Again, this is a medium-sized brown butterfly with eye spots. It's the largest of the satyrs. It's about half again as big as the little wood satyr. Notice that the outer edge of the hind wing has a very scalloped shape, and you can see it, that the arrows are pointing to it there. It's not an even, smooth, rounded outer margin of the hind wing. There are four, and sometimes five, eye spots visible on the hind wing. These are all about the same size. The eye spots above are solid. They have no light flecks that are like pupils in the center of the eye spots. This is not true on the underside, however. And there you see the eye spots that are visible above. Here's the underside of the northern pearly eye. Notice that the eye spots here do have pupils. I draw your attention to the prominent dark bands on the undersides of the wings. This is the satyr that's going to have the most contrast in color on the undersides of the wings. Those dark bands are very much darker than the lighter brown ground color. This is a woodland species. You're never going to see a northern pearly eye particularly far away from the woods, and most typically you're going to see them in woodlands. And uh, the arrow there is pointing to the very contrasty dark bands on the undersides of the wings. Now contrast that with this butterfly, the eyed brown. <clears throat> Again, this is a medium-sized, medium-brown butterfly. But here, in contrast to the pearly eye, the outer edge of the hind wing is rounded. Again, there are four to five Hi, uh, eye spots on the hind wing, uh, and they are all about the same size. Medium brown color. Now here's the underside of the wing. See, once again, on the underside, the um, eye spots now have pupils. But notice again that very evenly rounded outer margin of the hind wing. On the underside, there are also thin brown bands. In a worn specimen, they be, may be difficult to see, but notice there is much less color contrast on the underside of an eyed brown than there is on the underside of the pearly eye. This is a wetland species. You're going to find the eyed browns in places like sedge meadows and uh, other places with wetland plants. The caterpillar food plants are sedges, so this needs to be an area that has sedges growing in it if you're going to have eyed browns there. It's one of our most common wetland specialist butterflies. The final member of the satyr group is the wood nymph. Again, this is a medium-sized butterfly. The satyrs, um, with the exception of the uh, little wood satyr, are all about the same size. The pearly eye may be just slightly larger than the eyed brown and the wood nymph. Notice how dark this particular individual is. Fresh individuals of wood nymphs look black. And in fact, very fresh individuals can be so dark that it can be difficult to see the eye spots, particularly the smaller eye spots on the hind wing. Uh, on the forewing, there are two very prominent eye spots. Now, one thing to be cautious about with this species involves field guides. 
There are different subspecies east and south of here, and those subspecies have a bright orange patch that surrounds the two eye spots on the forewing. And that patch can be seen both on the upper and under surface of the wings. And a lot of the field guides show the version of the species that has the bright orange patch. It's very striking. It's a very, those are very beautiful subspecies of the wood nymph. You may be tempted to uh, dismiss that as uh, a correct identification if you're looking at a field guide because our individuals will lack this prominent orange spot. Uh, in older, more worn individuals, they will sometimes develop a light sort of whitish patch up around the eye spots there, but never the bright orange that you see in eastern and southern populations. So now we'll move to uh, the brush-footed butterflies, the family Nymphalidae. Uh, the first of these is probably the most familiar butterfly in the entire world and many people's favorite butterfly, the monarch. It is a common, widespread species here in Illinois. You can see it in cities, you can see it in parks, you can see it in very high quality prairies, you can see it in dry places, you can see it in wet places. Just about the only place you won't see it is places with very, very dense shade, although it certainly will be found in more open savanna settings with, with uh, trees and intermixed shade and light. Uh, this butterfly is very famous for the migration that it makes to Mexico every year. It's got a very characteristic orange and black pattern. Um, that is um, uh, an indicator color. Monarchs are toxic. So this is called warning coloration. When birds eat a monarch, they become sick. They typically f uh, throw up the monarch. And they learn to associate this brilliant orange and black pattern with that unpleasant experience and in the future they will avoid eating it. <clears throat> a very similar species to the monarch, although not terribly closely related to it, is the viceroy. And you can see the very, very similar color pattern here. When two uh, butterflies show very similar color patterns like this, that is called mimicry. The caterpillars of viceroys feed on willows, and willow leaves also contains toxins that are sequestered in the body of both the caterpillar and retained in the adult butterfly. And so, like the monarch, the viceroy is also toxic. Willows are also wetland plants, so viceroys are most common in wetlands, although it's not at all uncommon for them to wander outside of wetlands, and you can see them in a variety of habitat types. So how do you tell a monarch from a viceroy? Because these butterflies both have very, very similar color patterns. Well, when you know the trick, it's actually quite easy. The viceroy has a single line that runs right down the middle of the hind wing like this. And this line is absent in the monarch. One of the nice things about this field mark is that it's visible on both the upper and the underside of the hind wing. So you can see this when the butterfly is perched, as these two butterflies are here. But with practice, you can even see whether the line is there or not as the monarch flies past you or as the viceroy flies past you. And so it is, with practice, possible to distinguish these two species even when they're on their wing. Now, some people uh, have also noticed that the viceroy tends to be smaller than the monarch, and usually that's true, but that can be a bit tricky to use as a field guide because the largest viceroys can be larger than the smallest monarchs. So, although, they've, um, although in general viceroys are in fact smaller than the monarchs, there is some overlap uh, at the extremes of the size ranges of both of these species. A relative of the viceroy doesn't look anything like it. This is the red-spotted purple. And unfortunately, its uh, name doesn't really help you much because it is neither red-spotted nor is it purple. Uh, it's uh, blue, as you can see here, black with um, blue on the hind wings. It's part of a mimicry ring involving larger black butterflies. Um, and this is about the size of a black swallowtail, and the bl uh, black swallowtail and the dark form female tiger swallowtail are also parts of this group of species that mimic one another. 
Uh, the hind wings are metallic blue, and above there are no orange, white, or yellow spots on the hind wing above. Now, below is where it gets its name, Red Spotted. Uh, the spots aren't really red. They're more of a, a brownish red, maybe a maroon. I suspect it got its name because uh, Red Spotted Purple sounds much more poetic and lovely than Maroon Spotted Blue. There's a group of butterflies with uh, very angled wings, called the angled wings. Uh, this is one of them. Uh, two of the species in this group make it into the top 25, and they're both named after punctuation marks, the question mark and the comma. We'll start with the question mark. Now, the question mark has seasonal color forms. The form that you see in this picture here is what you will see uh, in the middle of the summer. Early in the spring and later into the fall, the color form that you will see at that time, the dark on the hind wings, is replaced by the same sort of tawny orange that you see on the forewings. So the hind wings and the forewings in the summer question marks seem to be of very different colors. They'll be much more uniform. Um, they'll both still have the black spotting on them, but they will be predominantly that tawny orange in the spring and fall forms. Uh, incidentally, the spring and fall forms are the same color because this particular species overwinters as an adult. So there are two generations each year, one that the adults hatch out in the fall, overwinter, and then will lay their eggs in the spring, and the other that um, emerge in the summer. Notice the tips of the forewings and the tips of the hind wings are, are very, uh, there's a strong hook on the forewing tip and there's a strong tail on the hind wing. As you see right there, there is the tail and the hook on the tip of the forewing. Uh, this is visible on the underside as well. On the underside, you can also see a silvery spot right in the middle of the hind wing. And these are the punctuation marks, or the spots that give the punctuation mark names to these butterflies. The question mark uh, doesn't really look all that much like a question mark, but it gets its name because, like the question mark, its punctuation mark is in two, species, two pieces, a squiggle and a dot. Let's contrast that with the eastern comma, which is the other common member of this group that you will see as part of the top 25 here in northern Illinois. First of all, notice that the hooks on the forewing and the hindwing are much less pronounced than they are in the question mark. The, uh, the tails are stubbier. Like the question mark, there are two seasonal forms, and the difference is about the same. This is the summer version of the eastern comma, where the hind wings are much darker than the forewings. In the spring and fall uh, form, those would be a much lighter tawny orange, similar to the forewings. And here, the arrows are pointing out the uh, less pronounced hook on the forewing and the stubbier tail on the hindwing. Now on the underside, the comma is very easy to tell from the question mark. Note the silvery mark there in the middle of the hindwing is a single piece with hook dens that is in the shape of a comma. And there it is. So uh, just a quick close-up of the angle wing punctuation marks. On the left, you see the question mark in two distinct pieces. And on the right, the eastern comma, a single piece with hook dents. The comma um, punctuation mark looks almost like a little fish hook. Now, another butterfly in the brush-footed butterflies is called the morning cloak. This very distinct species has nothing else here in northern Illinois that looks at all like it. Uh, it has irregularly shaped wings and a very prominent distinctive yellow band that extends all the way around the outer margin of the wings. In older, worn individuals, this yellow marginal band can fade to where it's nearly white, but still uh, retains the very distinctive shape and the basic color pattern, just much more washed out. Another very distinctive species that can be mistaken for nothing else here in northern Illinois is the red admiral. Uh, this red, white, and black species is very common. The upper side is unmistakable. 
Uh, this species is especially common in urban areas. That's because the caterpillars feed on plants in the nettle family. And there is a, a member of the nettle family called pellitory that's a very inconspicuous lawn weed, uh, particularly in urban areas. You find this butterfly a lot right within the city limits of Chicago. Um, now, on the underside, it doesn't have that distinctive pattern. It's got a cryptic, cryptic pattern. It blends in with bark, and you will sometimes see it landing on trees and branches like this and folding its wings so that it hides. But notice that that white bar on the forewing is still visible even on the underside and will identify this butterfly as the Red Admiral even if it's perched with its wings closed. And there is the white bar we are referring to here. There are also two butterflies called the ladies, and we have two of these species here in Illinois, the American Lady and the Painted Lady. Both of these are medium-sized orange butterflies with very rapid flight. How do you tell them apart? Well, first of all, the American Lady has this orange subapical band right there, and we'll see in a moment that that band is white in the Painted Lady. Uh, it also has spots on the edge of the hind wing, and in the American Lady, these spots have a blue center, at least some of them do. And this blue center, center tends to be fairly prominent and visible, and in fact, in a lot of individuals, it's much larger than the blue spot shown in this individual here. Finally, there's a white dot on the forewing in the middle of one of the orange splotches. Uh, there it is right there, and you can see it on uh, both of the four wings here. That dot is absent on the Painted Lady. Now, underneath, these are uh, even easier to tell apart. Notice on the American Lady, there are two large eye spots on the outer uh, margin of the hind wing, and we will see that the pattern is quite different in the Painted Lady. So let's switch to the Painted Lady now and take a look at what that species looks like. The orange subapical band that you saw in the American Lady is white in the Painted Lady. The uh, submarginal dots on the hind wing are solid black or maybe have at best a very tiny blue dot in the center, but it's not a nice prominent blue splotch as is the case in the American Lady. And finally, there's no white dot in the forewing. That uh, orange splotch there is free of a white dot. And underneath, uh, as I mentioned, they are even easier to tell apart because instead of having two large eye spots, there are four smaller eye spots along the outer margin of the hind wing below. Uh, let's review the differences between the American Painted Ladies and look at them side by side here. So the American Lady has an orange um, subapical band, whereas the Painted Lady has a white subapical band. The submarginal spots on the hind wing of the American Lady have a blue center, and they are solid black in the Painted Lady. And there is a white dot on the forewing of the painted lady of the American lady that is absent from the forewing of the painted lady. And on the hind wing or on the underside rather, there are two large spots on the margin of the hind wing of the American lady and four to five small spots on the outer margin of the hind wing of the painted lady. The next species we're going to look at is another one of these unmistakable species, the buckeye vividly colored, medium-sized butterfly. There's a prominent pair of red bands on the leading edge of the forewing and large, multicolored spots on both the forewing and the hindwing. Now, in the tropics, there are a number of species of butterflies, uh, of buckeye butterflies, a couple of which make it up into the extreme south of Florida and Texas. Fortunately, we don't have to worry about uh, any of these species here in Illinois. The buckeye is the only member of this group that uh, gets this far north. So really, nothing else in Illinois looks anything like the buckeye, um, and that makes it particularly easy to identify. The 
pearl crescent is another very common butterfly in Illinois. It is small. And in fact, if you see a small, medium orange butterfly of this sort, it is most likely to be a pearl crescent. It's orange with brown lines and spots. And the spots along the uh, outer margin of the hind wing are solid black. And those are the spots that we're talking about there. They don't have light centers. They are solid black dots. That identifies this as a pearl crescent. These will also perch fairly often with their wings closed. And what you see belief beneath is that they are distinctly bicolored with the forewings being predominantly orange and the hindwings being predominantly either yellow or white. And there will be spots and lines and splotches on both the forewing and the hindwing, both above and below. A much larger medium orange butterfly is the Great Spangled Fritillary. Uh, this is about the size of a monarch, so this is a big butterfly, much, much larger than a pearl crescent. <clears throat> but like the pearl crescent, it is this medium tawny orange above with dark lines and spots. Underneath, this is an incredibly beautiful butterfly. Because below, it's uh, a buff brown color with prominent, almost metallic, silvery spots. Very, very lovely butterfly to look at. Very common butterfly. You see this mostly in um, settings that are... Um, at the edges of woods or close to woods. Although, uh, if there are woods somewhat nearby, it will uh, even wander out onto the prairie. So our last family of butterflies is the skippers. Skippers have a reputation of being very difficult to identify. They're really not that hard, but they are not for beginners, with one exception. The silver-spotted skipper is a common skipper in Illinois, uh, it's a medium-sized butterfly, which means it's very large for a skipper. Most skippers are very small butterflies. And this species is kind of the exception to the general skipper rule in that it's just as easy to identify as any other butterfly here in Illinois. Notice that bright silvery white spot on the hind wing. This is only visible on the underside. If the butterfly opens its wings, that splotch will not be visible. However, the uh, yellow band on the forewings are vis is visible both above and below. This is a very beautiful, very distinctive butterfly, and also a very common butterfly. And as I say, not really characteristic of the skippers because this is a particularly easy species to identify. So what do we do with the rest of the skippers? Because this is uh, a group that uh, in the whole is fairly abundant. A lot of people are going to see them. And how do you deal with that, uh, given that this is a very species-rich group and particularly for beginners can seem overwhelming? Well, when you're just starting out, it is uh, very helpful to be able to see a butterfly and simply notice that it is a skipper. Um, so these are small butterflies. They are various combinations of brown, orange, and yellow. Uh, and many of the species bask by opening their hind wings while keeping their forewings closed or mostly closed. And some people refer to this as the paper airplane or fighter jet position. And that's a very characteristic behavior of skippers. So in your first season, or maybe even your first two seasons of monitoring, with the exception of the silver-spotted skipper, which you should be able to identify, it's sufficient to simply say that you have seen a skipper and tell how many skippers you have seen in each of your monitoring transects. <clears throat> so that closes our top 25 butterflies. I hope that by reducing the number of species that you have to uh, be concerned about at the beginning, to those species that you are most likely to see will make the task of learning how to identify butterflies for monitoring here in Illinois a bit easier of a task.